In biology, evolution can be defined as the change in heritable characteristics of organisms across numerous generations. In other words, descent with modification. This is caused by the combination of genetic drift and the process of natural selection on genetic variation, shaping the prominence of certain traits within the organism and over successive generations, this organism progressively evolves to be more adapted and successful in its specific environment. In this video, we'll introduce you to the term transitional fossil and guide you through three examples, each serving as evidence supporting the theory of evolution. The term transitional fossil refers to the fossilized form of an organism displaying characteristics common to both the ancestor and the descendant species. To put it another way, it serves as an intermediate stage between the ancestor and its descendant, showcasing transitional features. While these species are occasionally called missing links, scientists prefer the terms transitional form or intermediate form. The notion of a missing link implies a linear progression, where one species evolves into another, and so on. And that's the problem, as not every species fits into a direct lineage of ancestors and descendants. Rather than a chain, evolution follows a tree-like branching pattern, allowing for the possibility of multiple descendants of an ancestor to exist at the same time, or even alongside the ancestor itself. Given the complexity of the evolutionary tree, there should be an almost infinite number of these transitional forms. Yet, the existence of such preserved species is due to the incompleteness of the fossil record relatively scarce. Charles Darwin himself acknowledged that the lack of transitional fossils posed the most obvious objection against his theory of evolution. Nevertheless, over time, the number of discovered transitional fossils has increased quite significantly. Just two years after publishing his first book, On the Origin of Species, Darwin received news about the discovery of perhaps the most remarkable transitional fossils ever found. The Archaeopteryx, a raven-sized member of the family Archaeopterygidae, that lived in what is now Germany during the late Jurassic period, around 150 million years ago. Unearthed in 1861, this specimen is exceptionally well-preserved, likely due to a rapid burial in soft mud shortly after its death. Since its original discovery, 11 more fossils have been found, with most of them carrying impressions of feathers. Initially, Archaeopteryx was considered the oldest known bird. However, a 2011 study revealed its classification as a non-avian dinosaur closely linked to the origin of birds. The skeleton exhibits characteristics found in Deinonychosaurs, a group of small theropod dinosaurs including families like Dromaeosaurs or Trudontids. These traits include sharp teeth, a hyperextensible second toe, known as the killing claw, and an extended bony tail. However, it also showcases traits commonly associated with birds, including a fused clavicle bone known as the wishbone, a hind foot with a reversed perching toe, and of course, feathers. The combination of these features positions it as an ideal candidate for transitional form between non-avian dinosaurs and birds. Originally, it was believed that its wing-like forelimbs allowed the creature to glide between trees. However, recent studies suggest Archaeopteryx may not have been limited to gliding and might have possessed the capability of flight. For a long time, it was theorized that life on land originated in the oceans. However, it wasn't until 2004 that the first evidence supporting this idea surfaced in the form of Tiktaalik. Belonging to an extinct group of animals called Sarcopterygians, or lobe-finned fish, Tiktaalik lived during the late Devonian period, approximately 375 million years ago. While still retaining fish-like characteristics such as gills, scales, and fins, 
Its fins featured primitive wrist joints, enabling the animal's front limbs to bear its own weight. It also possessed a mobile neck and a more robust rib cage, necessary features for all terrestrial vertebrates, suggesting its capability to drag itself onto land and move around in mud or shallow water. Additionally, Tiktaalik showcased another crucial evolutionary feature for life on land, primitive lungs. Being half fish, half tetrapod has led paleontologists to suggest that it is the transitional form between the two. This transition from water to land over millions of years of evolution gave rise to various lineages, including amphibians, sauropsids like reptiles, which later evolved into dinosaurs and birds, and synapsids, a group containing extinct pelicosaurs or therapsids and all living mammals. After colonizing the land, some tetrapods returned to aquatic lifestyles, and one of the most intriguing cases is that of pachycetids and ambulocetids. During the early Eocene, this group of dog-like animals with hooved feet, although vastly different from those we are used to seeing today, were in fact the ancestors of whales. It might be challenging to imagine, but indeed, whales once walked on land. The connection between these animals and whales becomes apparent through the unique shape of their inner ear, a specialized region known as the auditory bulla, exclusive to whales. Over the course of roughly 10 million years, these early whales became substantially more amphibious, until the only fully aquatic forms remained. Consider Pachycetus, for instance. Although primarily still living on land and measuring only 1 to 2 meters, or 3 to 6 feet in length, it had already developed swimming adaptations 50 million years ago. Then, 41 million years ago, a large predatory whale named Basilosaurus reached sizes of up to 18 meters. During this transition, whales underwent substantial changes in their anatomy, diet, and senses. Initially, pachycetids had nostrils at the front of the skull, but over time, these animals evolved nostrils positioned further back on the head, a trend that has continued into living whales. Fortunately, a great number of fossils of these animals have been discovered, giving us a good understanding of how these changes unfolded. In fact, the evolution of whales is so captivating that it unquestionably deserves a video of its own. Despite all the documented evidence, objections to evolution have been raised ever since Darwin's time. The majority of criticism originates from religious groups, rejecting the theory of evolution entirely in favor of creationism, the belief that our universe and all living beings were once created by the act of supernatural forces. However, to learn more about the never-ending rivalry between evolutionism and creationism, you will need to wait for another video 